Thank you very much for the introduction. So hello, everyone. I hope you enjoy the conference and feel good after lunch. And um, let's talk about security. So in that today's talk, I'm going to share with you our journey of scaling security in the organization by introducing it into SDLC, Software Development Lifecycle, uh, sharing with you some challenges we faced, some tricks we applied, and some lessons learned. So. Uh, since Jane the Beach is not really a security conference, I would like to start with some examples. Uh, security is a very broad area, and I would really go, would like to go a bit more specific in the context of this talk. Through these examples, we will start to see the need to actually shift security left, which means introduce it into development practices to enable developers to make their application more secure. Uh, then I will present you security activities, which we do execute in the workshop, and in the culmination of the talk, you will see security index framework, which is our way to drive security in the workshop. So let's start. Uh, and here the story begins. So we have the development team, which is building their web application. So the architecture in this case is quite a traditional nowadays. There is a React front end running in the browser, then some backend APIs built in a Spring Boot and Java, and data is stored in a Postgres. So the team is working very hard to deliver their application, and the day finally is there when they are ready to release it to, to public, deploy it to production. Uh, but then suddenly, what happens quite frequently in the real life, then once the application is made available, boom, attackers come and start exploiting your application, trying to compromise it in one or another way, producing some damage. Uh, but fortunately, our development team is very professional and smart, and they are familiar with security fundamentals. So they would never, ever allow anything like that to happen in production. Uh, this is why they take care of security from the very beginning. So knowing some best practices of secure design and secure coding. Uh, and this is what we can see what they done, what, what they done with the application. Uh, and this is what we refer with the application security practices. So for example, in the front end, they applied XSS protection. So this is what makes uh, impossible cross-site scripting attacks. Uh, TLS is enabled everywhere, not only on the entrance into your system, but also on the internal connections. Uh, strong access control is another key requirement. Uh, same as writing your SQL queries in a way which do not allow SQL injections. Mm, and lastly, when it's about data sensitivity, uh, if you are going to store passwords of your users in the database, it is definitely a very bad idea to store them in plain text. So what you need to do is to choose some reliable, cryptographically secure algorithm in order to store it securely. So, so far, so good. Development team did their job well. Application is well protected. Once deployed to production, there was no any single security incident. Good. Uh, let's see how the story evolves. So here is um, the same or maybe a different development team building their next system. Uh, this time, application is way more complicated. So functionally, business logic is more complicated. Also, the architecture many technologies involved in many different layers. So once again, the team is working hard. And then what frequently happens in the real life is that someday the team realizes that there is no time left to think about in-depth security. Because deadlines are pressing. There are so many new technologies to learn. So no capacity is left to think about security. Uh, what to do? What to do in this case? And there is a solution. So let's involve AppSec team. Application security team is the team of experts who are focusing on security. They are aware of the best practices. And this is where they can join the project and help to achieve security. So in this case, uh, they analyze the system and come up with some proposals. Just to mention some of these advanced level security controls, uh, they might suggest to enable some web application uh, firewall features on a Cloudflare, uh, then to, to enable even mutual TLS on the internal connections of the systems, 
Uh, when it's about storing credentials or encryption secrets, let's put them into HashiCorp Vault. Um, on a data storage, which in this case is Cassandra, let's apply encryption at rest and maybe even on a various layers. So once again, work is well done. The system is well protected. And this is where the role of the team, which I'm part of in the workshop, starts to appear. So our team of application security initially was formed to actually help teams achieving this. So to ensure that all the projects which we build are built in the most secure way. Uh, while there is one difference, so our team in the workshop is not at all this uh, serious police bodyguard style looking guys like here on the picture. So we really follow the workshop culture and one of our core values is collaboration. So what we do, we work hand by hand with, with development teams, enabling them actually to autonomously deliver security. So, so far so good. This approach works very well, no problems. What happens next? Another project comes. Uh, in the workshop, we build big variety of products. So in this case, it is totally different business domain, absolutely new technology stack. So a big challenge for both for development teams, but also for security team. We need to learn a lot. We need to build together this project. But once again, here we are to do it. So we, we do it and all is good. But what is next? So many, many and many other projects come. And this is where we start to realize a bit of a challenge. Once again, they all are different, different architectures. And what happens? So if we have more than 250 developers building new application and enhancing their applications every day, then with the size of AppSec team by only five people or even seven, it is not enough to satisfy all the needs. So what frequently happens is that AppSec team becomes a bottleneck, which is not able anymore to guarantee good security coverage in all the projects. So the challenge here becomes how to scale security in the organization so that the final result does not anymore depend on the AppSec team being present and close to the project. And then when, so once we realized this challenge, and it was in the time when we were just three people in the team, we decided to sit down and think how we are going to address it. Uh, and then thinking about the ways to actually complete our mission statement, which is protecting our business and applications from uh, weaknesses and attacks, uh, by actually enabling development teams to do it autonomously following their development practices by providing processes and tooling to them, uh, we came up to the idea to, that we need to have a security framework. And thinking about properties of this framework, we came up with the following ones. So on, on the first place, we wanted this framework to be well-structured so that all the projects we built, we could easily apply it to them, but also flexible to allow for certain customization. Uh, addressing security issues early in the development life cycle is the key requirement. Like the earlier you start, the less costly it will be for you and the better will be the final result. Seamlessly integrated into development life cycle is just a must. Like DevSecOps is here with us and we need to follow this approach. Making security effective in agile environments is a special challenge because traditionally security is quite a heavyweight process. And in the workshop, we, we have a very dynamic environment. So things are changing rapidly every day. Teams are continuously improving their ways of working. So whatever we come up with needs to be aligned and need to adapt easily into these practices. And last on this list, but maybe even the most important ones in the sense of priority is to ensure that developers like it. Because without the buy-in on this main audience from the people who really are building the software, you cannot succeed in achieving the, your, your mission. And now with this um, ambitious objective, I would like to call back to the title of the talk. So is it really a dream to have this type of a framework working in a medium or large organization, or it is possible to make it a reality? Because on the paper, it looks very good. 
But then once you enter the real environment and you start to see daily challenges, which everyone is experiencing, you actually will definitely find out uh, these problems which you haven't think before. Uh, and this is exactly what happened also to us. And in the remaining part of the talk, I would like to share with you uh, what steps did we make, what mistakes we did, and then where we finally ended up. So, the very first thing we decided to change is replacing this ad hoc on-demand approach to security by some well-structured activities. And then analyzing a little bit the market, experimenting with some particular methodologies, we decided to start with these four groups of security activities. So first is security scanning, second is threat modeling, third, ASVS compliance, and lastly, penetration testing. Uh, I will tell you more about these activities in, in a minute. Next important step was to think about how exactly to integrate these particular activities into development life cycle. Uh, and this is how we came up with this matrix. So here in the column, you can see high level phases of delivery process. So there is design, delivery, development, and production. And then in the rows, you can see tiers. Tier one, tier two, tier three. The tier represents criticality of the application. Tier one is the most critical to the business. The most sensitive applications we want to invest majority of our security effort into those. Uh, while tier three is, is different. So those might be some internal applications or applications which do not have sensitive data at all. Uh, and then this is where we have our roadmap. So we are ready to start executing this together with our teams. Uh, and now it's time for me to tell you a bit more about these activities, because in case you're looking to start addressing security in a bit more organized way in your company, this could be a good starting point. So the very first one is application security testing and scanning. So the number of things which you can do in this area is very broad nowadays. Like you can really scan everything. What I'm showing you here is just the very tip of the iceberg what roughly is like a must have in the modern pipeline. Uh, first category is SAST. Uh, SAST stands for Static Application Security Testing. Uh, in this case, it is a white box. So the scanner has access to the source code of your application and is scanning it using certain rules, producing a report. Uh, this way detecting defects early. Second group is software composition analysis. So this is where the scanner is looking for third-party open source dependencies in your code together with their vulnerabilities. Uh, and this actually became very important in the recent month after such a widespread vulnerabilities have been published as a log for shell and spring for shell. Like definitely all of you heard about those. So this is extremely important step. So you can invest as much time as you want into making your own code secure, but if your dependencies are vulnerable, your application either is protected. Uh, and the last on this list is dynamic application security scanning. This time it is black box, so there is no access to source code, but the application is running in the runtime environment and the scanner is, like the tool is just scanning this for vulnerabilities. This way, detecting issues in the runtime. Some tools which I mentioned here are just some examples. Like the market really is very broad, so if you're interested to integrate anything like that into your pipeline, I suggest you to explore the market and to find out the tool which works the best for you. Uh, second uh, group of activities which we do practice at the workshop is threat modeling. So this is really a very big trend in application security in the last years. Uh, there are many tools supporting this methodology. Many books are written. Uh, there is even a threat modeling manifesto published to align the community on the right way to do it. And then in a nutshell, so in its simplest form, it is a brainstorming exercise where the team building the project, everyone meets together and try to find answer to these three questions. So what we are building, so both functionality-wise and technology-wise, once everyone is aligned on this, the key question to ask is, so what can go wrong? What is the worst thing which could happen to the business? And after you manage to identify some threats using this way, 
The last question is to think what to do about it. So how to mitigate them? What security controls, what features to implement to ensure that you are not vulnerable to, to these problems? So this really, this practice helps to ensure that secure design is present from the very beginning, which is the key to success. Uh, third, big activity which appears to be very useful for us is OWASP ASVS. So ASVS stands for Application Security Verification Standard. So this is a collection of best practices on security uh, design, coding, and verification practices. It is maintained by OWASP, which is the most reputable open source community on security, and it is really a culmination of the industry effort over the last decade. It is also maintained very up-to-date, so it is very modern. And even while in the classical security teams, this is frequently used as a checklist to verify your security at the very end of the project, in the workshop, once again, we use it to drive security requirements from the very, very beginning. And I really recommend to all senior engineers and architects to take a look inside, because there is for sure a lot of useful content you might find there. And to give you some insight, um, ASVS is structured in 14 chapters. Uh, and, and it basically covers all the areas of application security you might need when building web applications. Starting from such a fundamental pillar as authentication, session management, access control, but also entering in way less widespread areas such as uh, cryptography, configuration challenges, malicious code, and file upload, and other things. So there is a lot of useful content. And the very last here in my list, but maybe the most popular and widespreadly known, is penetration testing. So penetration testing is so-called ethical hacking exercise, where the executor is trying to exploit your application, trying to break it. Complexity of this exercise can vary a lot. So it can be just a very superficial one hour or two hour scan, or it can be very in-depth, several days complicated exercise. So here, the tools which I'm showing you there is just the very, very starting point. Like penetration testing is a, is a profession. Like there is a lot of things there. But if you are curious, you can start exploring from there. And one of the interesting observations which I would like to share with you, our experience, is that Actually, once we start to introduce other security activities into our development life cycle, we almost immediately started to see that penetration testing at the end is discovering way less security problems. And this is exactly the objective. So to ensure that security is there from the very beginning, and you don't need to take care about this at the very end. So it looks good so far. So we have a development life cycle. We have security activities, and it works. Looks quite beautiful. But did we really manage to build a secure development life cycle? And actually, it appeared that we are not there yet. And now I would like to share with you some challenges which we face it, so that in case you want to repeat, you don't repeat our mistakes. So the very first group of complexities faced were trivially related to security activities themselves. So we realize that they are not perfect, and there is a way to improve them. Penetration testing is very expensive, and it requires very special skill set. Uh, automated scanning of any sort is detecting a huge amount of false positives. So you need to review the report, and to be honest, this is quite a boring exercise frequently to, to do this exercise. Uh, ASVS checks are very time consuming, especially in case you attempt doing this manually, and Neither it is a natural fit for agile environment, which is our case. And lastly, threat modeling, we're still surprised to see slow adoption by development teams. And sometimes it is detecting too many threats, which, and not all of them are really relevant in a particular context. But uh, actually, the thing was that the key challenge and the main barrier for us to, to ensure that great security coverage was even somewhere else. Uh, and this is what uh, our <laughs> lessons learned, which I would like to put into the headline of the talk. So what we realized while, do while doing this was that 
doing secure design and preventing security defects by application security team is the easy part. So anyone from our team can join any project. We execute security activities and result is great. What is the difficult part in the organization is to ensure that all this works without the explicit presence of AppSec team. And when we realize this, we start to think about why. And we find out that there are two main areas which requires addressing to make it a success. So the first one is related to building a security mindset in all the roles. So starting from engineers, but also architects, managers, clients, everyone uh, need to start thinking about security in a different way. So the same as it happened with quality, when quality became the part of engineering, the same evolution needs to happen also with security. And it takes time. Like This is not something what you can do in, in one week. Uh, and second uh, challenge is really very classical for security in all the world. So having security features prioritized for work in the alongside all the other work streams is really challenging. And then once we identify that this is, it, it simply does not work for us, we decided to pause a little bit. We decided to step back and rethink the way we try to do this. Uh, and here I would like to present you Security Index, uh, which is a security framework which we ended up with. So this is the end-to-end -end process for security engagement um, and effective resolution of security problems in your SDLC, in your development life cycle. So here it, how it works. Everything starts when the team decides to build the product. The very first step for them is to uh, calculate a product criticality tier uh, by answer applying, again, some, some calculations. So this will tell you what security activities are really relevant to be executed in, in what stages of your process. Uh, all security activities will produce security findings. Security finding is a special observation or a statement about a potential security problem, but they need to be reviewed and they need to be validated by development teams. And, and this review process can have three outcomes. So either you can say it is false positive, you discard it and you forget, uh, or you can accept the risk. So you say, yes, this is a security problem, but we are not going to do anything about it. And this is perfectly fine once properly justified. And lastly, uh, we can confirm a security finding, and by this you are saying, like, yes, we want to do something about it. And this produces a security ticket uh, in your team's backlog, and it just needs to be prioritized using your proper um, prioritization engine, and once this is done, you are done. But the thing which really made a difference for us, and without it, it still didn't work, was introducing metrics and dashboards through all the phases of this process. And only this really was the, the detail which made the difference. So once we managed to get full visibility on every step of the process, this is what actually closed the feedback loop. And from there on, we finally were able to say, yes, secure development life cycle now is the reality. And with all the metrics around all the things, we were able to optimize the flow. And now we already have 90% of our products onboarded into this framework, and we started to see some progress. So uh, first was increase in the findings reviewed rate. This was the main bottleneck in the past. Now it is, it is progressing. Security defects get fixed faster. And the most importantly, we have a positive feedback from the teams. Uh, for instance, by introducing some gamification around the process, a little bit of a competitive factor there, it became it. It makes it more fun and engaging. And then, so this is where we are. And to conclude my presentation, I would like to summarize some takeaways. So very first thing, consider so, uh, security as early as possible because it will definitely pay you back. Make security a true part of your development life cycle. Like this approach with the AppSec team sitting there in the corner and doing their work does not scale that well. Uh, choose appropriate security activities to execute in your life cycle. I presented you some which work for us, 
your case might be totally different. So explore the market and find out those which are good for your environment. Start small and simple is general recommendation for whatever you try to do in the organization. And most importantly, ensure that the whole, life, the whole cycle works. So once you start to see security problems addressed, being addressed continuously in your application, this is where you can celebrate success and that keep enhancing your approach by innovating. So at the workshop, we are fearless inventors. And this is why we really love to build uh, cool software. And this is our story. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Alina, for that. I do. We have two minutes left, so I'd like to open the floor for any questions. Do we have any from the crowd? Ooh, okay. Okay, Alina. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. My question is. What is the process that you have when one of your customers find out a vulnerability in your product? Like, how do you, how do you, how do you, what do you do on that moment? Yes, yeah, so vulnerability management is is a separate topic, which is also quite complicated. But at the end, it it it, embed, it is embedded pretty well in this framework, which has, which is presented there. So, again, the clients at some point they become aware of security findings or security issues, so there is a full visibility. That's why they can prioritize them properly. There is also estimation uh, process, how really you evaluate the severity of the security finding. So at the end, this, uh, making this really available and clear for the clients is another very key factor to succeed. Hello, thanks for the present presentation. I wanted to ask you a question. You, you, when, when you have a security finding, there was one euro, you create a ticket. There was the other row, you accept the risk. This is. For me, the real issue, who accepts the risk, who bears the responsibility if the risk uh, like is realizing? Yes, yes, this is, this is a very good question, and this is what, we all, what is a big part of our work. Because especially quite frequently, who tends to accept the risk sometimes are engineers. And this is not really right. Sometimes architects make the decision to accept the risk, which again can be better or worse, but at the end, the client is ultimately owning your product. That's why, ideally, you need to find the right way to cascade it, to, to also optimize, because forwarding all your vulnerabilities to the client neither is effective. That's why accepting the risk in the certain levels is fine, but while you're conscious about how to do it right. All right, so that's all we have time for. Why don't we give another round of applause for Alina? Thank you so much.